<laughs> it's it's still all emotional, it, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. It's hard to. Are, uh, it's hard to process. Yeah, because it was a long time. And it was you're... seven years, and just like the enthusiasm that's here, you know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> the enthusiasm that's here is kind of everywhere, you huh. know. And you, it's uh -huh. just so amazing. We feel, you know, so loved and and and. Just, it's hard to take in. Well, you were we, you were our Sunday nights. We every oh, single Sunday night, I watched and had no idea what you were talking about. But <laughs> I, uh, I loved me it. neither. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely loved the show. Thanks, I loved watching Alan. it. So, and I'm Thank glad you. to have you here. I've been Thank we you. run into each other, and I keep saying I know Come to we the see show. each other all the time. Your producer asked me, well, "Have you ever met Ellen?" And I was like, "I can't even remember when I met Ellen." Yeah, many years back. Many years back, which is a wonderful thing. So, and now it, it, it's it's hard. You're not. Are you home just watching the show over and over again in your bed, crying? Or <laughs> no, I haven't gone there. You know, just hearing the song, the more, more, more song. I'm like, <gasps> um, you know. So I've been trying to kind of, uh, you know, remember that like I have a life, uh, you know, separate, which mm -hmm. is it, it's a learning experience because when you're on that kind of a show, it just takes over your whole existence. Right. It, which is a good thing. But then you get over and you're like, oh, I have to, you know, do normal things and and you know, function. Right. Um, and then we've been doing a lot of press still, which is odd, but we're about to be syndicated. So we'll be on right. five nights a week. So we just went, spent a week together in New York. Oh, that's great. I mean, for us, it's hard to really kind of take in that it's over, mm -hmm. you know, like come, come June, we'll be like ready to go back to work. You yeah. know, we'll yeah. be like going to the set. Yeah. That will be gone. Right. So, yeah. so it's still a little bit. It's still a little odd. It's but a little but odd. you also now is there because there's talk of of a movie. Are you going to do a movie? Or? Well, we really hope so. I had Michael uh, Michael Patrick King and I had dinner and I told him I was coming and he was like, Hi, oh, Ellen, Ellen, and Ellen called me in Paris and it was so sweet. And I said, Michael, what am I supposed to say about the movie? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, just the whole drama of the movie has been in the press, like every week I have to pick up the paper. Are we doing it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, the paper says right. no. Oh, the next one, oh, the paper says yes. I'm like, ah. Yeah. Oh. So I said, Michael, what do I say? And he said, well, you know, tell him we're really excited and we want to do it. I mean, he's writing and I know my yeah. storyline and I love it. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, mean, I, hope, I hope you get to do it then. That's how I feel too. If not, you could come and act it out here every day. I would love to do that. Yeah. We yeah. could have so much fun yeah. doing that. What is the storyline? <laughs> You're terrible. Michael will come and kill me. Yeah. But you know, it, the funny thing about our whole lives is our whole professional lives together, you know, it kind of had its own uh, energy, its own momentum. Because mm -hmm. we never knew in the beginning that it would be a hit. We never knew we'd go on so long. None of it was expected. So. Right. It kind of almost created its own, like when we were doing the final couple episodes, they were so charged up and, and so full of stuff. And Michael would be like, hey, we could do blah, blah, blah. And we'd be like, yeah. Yeah. You know? Right. So there's a, there was a lot percolating. And it's kind of the, ex what you would expect from the ending, what would happen next. Yeah. I liked the ending, by the way. I know that y'all shot four different endings from what I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm happy with the ending that y'all did. That was the one I voted on, too. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, we now, had a little bit. And so um, your, your, uh, your character, it's so weird because reading up on you, you're nothing like that character at all. No. Um, and the first thing is you're, you're single and you're totally fine with being single. I am. Completely fine with I it. I am. I am completely fine with it, which seems to really mystify a lot of people. Uh -huh. I think it does. And especially interesting. playing in that, I mean, that show was all about trying to, I right. mean, even though it was about single women, it right. really was about dating. Absolutely. And I think especially Charlotte. Charlotte was someone who really, 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 really wanted to be married more than anything in the world. Right. Which is true for a lot of my friends. I, I understand it. I don't right. necessarily have that urge myself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's funny, people publicly, I mean, I, I Googled the show the other day mm -hmm. and to see if we were doing the movie or not, and um, yeah. it said, Kristen Davis, be not having a relationship, she is still complete. This was a headline. And I was like, wow. what? We need to have this as a headline? It right. is so bizarre to people right. to think that I could be happy with my dog and my right. friends and right. you know my wonderful life. But you know, I think we are a society who wants people to match up, you know? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think so. But, but, um, but you're happy with your dog. Is he fat? She, <laughs> <laughs> she used to be fat, Ellen. She used to be fat. She went to doggy camp one time when I was away working. Uh -huh. I went to Canada and I couldn't take her. And I thought, did well, she run be away really to camp busy. or did you put her there? I put her there. Okay. I put her there. And I thought, you know, she'll be with her doggy friends uh -huh. and she'll be very active and run around uh -huh. and be, she'll be happy. She won't miss me. I came back. 
she had gained like 20 pounds. She ate all the other dog's food. <laughs> My dog is a bully. She's a wow. little bit of a bully. And it rained the whole month in LA, so she didn't get to run around. She just stayed inside and ate the other dog's food, and she just ballooned up. She's a golden retriever. Uh -huh. So she used to be kind of svelte and, you know, athletic, mm -hmm. and then she kind of waddled. Mm -hmm. So I took her to New York, where we were working, and the vets are, and just chastised me. Uh -huh. I was a very And what did you do mommy. to, what did she do? Well, she went it. on a program, whole program. She had to run behind the dog walker's bike through the city. <laughs> and one time I was coming home from work and I saw them, you know, and the dog walker's like pedaling and <laughs> Kelly's like, but it worked. Well, why so, doesn't the dog runner run with the dog? Why do you have to, why does the dog runner get to ride a bike? I don't think the dog walker could handle the running. Yeah. I think it was tough, you know? So she rode the bike and Callie had to run, but it worked and she swam. That was her other thing for is her Is she joints. still alive? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's that's... alive and she's doing really well. Really? Because once they lose weight, it's better on their joints. And no, they, I know. They that's what they say, and... that the cat needs to lose weight. But, yeah. but I think that's cruel, pulling it behind a bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. She seemed yeah. to forgive the dog walker, so it was okay. See, I didn't do it. You know yeah. this. I, right. You, you, you know. send them to exactly. other people. Exactly. That's like when the when the when the my cat has to get a shot. I leave the room. I don't want it totally. to associate, you don't want to be associated. with yeah, that pain. No, it's bad. And then absolutely. I come back and I go, "What did you do to him?" You know, Very and I just, so that he yeah. witnesses yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. Give absolutely. me that cat. Absolutely. I'll never take you here again. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have to take a commercial. We'll be right back right after this. So that that movie is the winning season. It's about baseball. Were you a baseball fan before you? Don't Not look. really. I no. kind of didn't know much at all, except for Sarah Jessica's a massive Yankees fan and has been trying to educate me mm -hmm. for years. But this is about baseball in 1909, which mm -hmm. is almost a completely different kind of game. It's very rough. They didn't have that many rules. There are always these big fist fights, kind really? of like hockey now. And they had these tiny little gloves, <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. um, and it was very interesting to, to kind of go back in time and think about, like, Baseball players were not held up to be these role models. They were kind of like the way actors used to not be accepted to hotels. Mm -hmm. Baseball players were like lowly. You know, people would go and cheer, but it wasn't thought of as being a fabulous thing to be. Not like now. Mm -mm. No, not at all. And this guy, Hannes Wagner, was one of the kind of early players. He was a good all-around player, I've learned. And he was one of the first people that they tried to kind of hold up to be something, to be a role model, and they wanted him basically to be on the first baseball card. And mm -hmm. they were going to put these baseball cards in cigarette packets. They came to him with the idea. They had printed 700 baseball cards already. And he said, you know, I don't want to advertise cigarettes. I don't believe in smoking. And they said, what do you mean? What do you mean? You'll get X amount of money, which was a huge amount in 1909. And he said, no, why would I want to advertise something I don't believe in? And they were like, <gasps> and he said, you know, you have to destroy all those cards. Well, they didn't. And that's why a Hannes Wagner baseball card, it's a tiny little card, is worth like, I think, a million and a half or two million. Really? Yeah. Because there were only this tiny amount made, and they were never destroyed, and they were supposed to be. So that's the story that's, that's the basis of our whole movie. Wow, that's a million and a half? Yeah. Just because there were a few made? Exactly. Can in, you imagine how much the Ellen Betting is worth? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a million and a half for a baseball card? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, because there weren't very many, and it was a yeah, long time but I ago, just, and it was like knew? the beginning. I know, who knew? Oh. I, that's how I felt, too. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> and, the, and the outfit would seem like a, a whole big Oh, it was unbelievable. Production. It was extremely high maintenance. Yeah. I'm kind of low maintenance. Like, at Sex and the City, I just throw on my clothes by myself. It took 45 minutes and two people to get me into those outfits. Yeah, that's why I don't dress that way. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, they made a corset for me, and it was from, like, here up below my hip bones. And oh. you just think, like, You can't how? sit in that. No, yeah. you can't breathe. No, I don't know how they dressed like insane. that back then. All right, so the wedding season is on April 14th at 8 o'clock on TNT. Everybody in the audience is getting a DVD of Sex and the City, the fifth season. <laughs>